All right, here we are. Video three, the line or uh, the magician's nephew. All right, so where we left off, um, Penny had disappeared. Uh, randomly, no trace of her. We don't know what happened to her yet. Uh, but we know that she touched a yellow ring. Um, so, and right now, uh, Diggory and Uncle Andrew are pretty much just talking about what exactly happened. So, we left off with, um, in fact, Diggory, you are now talking to the last man, possibly, who really had a fairy godmother. There. That'll be something for you to remember when you're an old, old man yourself. I bet she was a bad fairy, thought Diggory, and added out loud. But what about Polly? How do you harp on that, said Uncle Andrew, as if there was, as if that was what mattered. My first task was, of course, to study the box itself. It was very ancient, and I knew enough even then to know that it wasn't Greek or Old Egyptian or Babylonian or Hittite or Chinese. It was older than any of these nations. Ah, that was a great day. One day when I at last found out the truth, the box was Atlantean. It came from the lost island of Atlantis. This meant it was centuries older than any of the Stone Age things they dug up in Europe. And it wasn't a rough, crude thing like them either. For in the very dawn of time, Atlantis was already a great city, with palaces and temples and learned men. He paused for a moment, as if he expected Diggory to say something. But Diggory was just like his uncle more every minute. Disliking his uncle more every minute, so he said nothing. Meanwhile, continued Uncle Andrew, I was learning a good deal in other ways. It wouldn't be proper to explain them to a child about magic in general. That meant that I came to have a fair idea what sort of things might be in the box. By various tests, I narrowed down the possibilities. I had to get to know some, well, some devilish queer people and go through some very disagreeable experiences. That was what turned my head gray. One doesn't become a magician for nothing. My health broke down in the end, but I got better, and at last I actually knew. Although there was not really a, at least the least chance of anyone overhearing them, he leaned forward and almost whispered as he said, The Atlantean box contained something that had been brought from another world when our world was just only just beginning. What? asked Diggory, who was now interested in spite of himself. Only dust, said Uncle Andrew. Fine, dry dust. Nothing much to look at. Not much to show for a lifetime of toil, you might say. Ah, uh, but when I looked at that dust, I took jolly good care not to touch it, and thought that every grain had once been in another world. I don't mean another planet, you know. They're part of our world, and you could get to them if you went far enough. But a really other world. Another nature. Another universe. Somewhere you would never reach even if you traveled through the space of the universe forever and ever. A world that could only be reached by magic. Here, Uncle Andrew rubbed his hands till his knuckles cracked like fireworks. I knew, he went on, that if only you could get into the right form, that dust would draw you back to the place it had come from. But the difficulty was to get it into the right form. My early experiments were all failures. I tried them on guinea pigs. Some of them only died. Some exploded like little bombs. <laughs> It was a jolly cruel thing to do, said Diggory, who had once had a guinea pig of his own. How do you keep getting off point, said Uncle Andrew. That's what the creatures were for. I bought them myself. Let me see. Where was I? Ah, yes. 
At last I succeeded in making the rings, the yellow rings. But now a new difficulty arose. I was pretty sure now that a yellow ring would send any creature that touched it into the other place. But what would be the good what would be the good of that if I couldn't get them back to tell me what they had found there? And what about them? said Diggory. A nice mess they'd be if they couldn't get back. You will keep on looking at everything from the you keep looking at everything from the wrong point of view, said Uncle Andrew with a look of impatience. Can't you understand that the thing is a great experiment? The whole point of sending anyone into the other place is to find out what it's like. Well, why don't you go there yourself, then? Diggory had hardly ever seen anyone look so surprised and offend offended as his uncle did at that simple question. Me? He explained. Me? <clears throat> the boy must be mad. A man at my time in life and in my state of health to risk the shock and the dangers of being flung suddenly into a different universe? I never heard anything so preposterous in my life. Do you realize what you're saying? Think what another world means. You might meet anything. Anything. And I suppose you've sent Polly into, into it then, said Diggory. His cheeks were flaming with anger now. And all I can say, he added, even if you are my uncle, is that, is that you've behaved like a coward, sending a girl to a place you're afraid of to kill yourself. Silence, sir, said Uncle Andrew, bringing his hand down on the table. I will not be talked to like that by a little dirty schoolboy. You don't understand. Let's see. I am a great scholar, the magician, the adept, who is doing the experiment. Of course, I need subjects to do it on. Bless my soul, you'll be telling me next that I ought to have asked the guinea pig's permission before I used them. No great wisdom can be reached without sacrifice. But the idea of my going, going myself is, but the idea of me going myself is ridiculous. It's like asking a general to fight as a common soldier. Supposing I got killed, what would become of my life's work? Ah, uh, don't, st oh, do stop jawing, said Diggory. Are you going to bring Polly back? I was going to tell you when you were so rudely, when you so in rudely interrupted me, said Uncle Andrew, that I did at last find out a way to of doing the return journey. The green rings bring you back. But Polly hadn't gone hasn't gotten a green ring. No, said Uncle Andrew with a with a cruel smile. Then she she can't get back, said shouted Diggory. And it's exactly the same as if you murdered her. She she can get back, said Uncle Andrew. If someone else will go after her, wearing a yellow ring himself and taking the two green rings, one to bring himself back and one to bring her back. And now, of course, Diggory saw the trap in which he was caught, and he stared at Uncle Andrew, saying nothing with his mouth wide open. His cheeks had gone very pale. I hope, said Uncle Andrew, presenting, pre presentingly in a very high and mighty voice, just as if he were a perfect uncle who had, who had given one a... Uh, Want a handsome tip and good sound advice? I hope, Diggory, you are not given to showing the white feather. I should be very sorry to think that anyone in our family had not enough honor and chivalry to go to the aid of her or a lady in distress. Oh, shut up, said Diggory. If you had any honor and all that, you'd be going yourself, but I know you won't. All right, I see I've got to go, but you are a beast. I suppose you planned the whole thing so that she'd go without knowing it, and then I'd have to go after her. Of course, said Uncle Andrew, with his hateful smile. Very well, I'll go, 
But there's one thing I jolly well mean to say first. I don't believe in magic. I didn't believe in magic till today. I see now it's real. But if it is, I suppose all the old fairy tales are more or less true. And you're simply a wicked, cruel magician like the ones in the stories. Well, I've never read a story in which people of that sort weren't paid out at the end, and I bet you you will be, and serve you right. All the things Diggory had said, this of all the things Diggory had said, this was the first that really went home. Uncle Andrew stared, stared, started, and there came over his face such a look of horror that, beast though he was, you could almost feel sorry for him. But a second later, he smoothed it all away and said that, said with a rather forced laugh, Well, well, I suppose that is a natural thing for a child to think. Brought up among women, as you have been. Old wife's tales, huh? I don't think you need to worry about my danger, Diggory. Wouldn't it be better to worry about the danger of your little friend? She's been gone some time. If there are any dangers over there, well, it would be a pity to arrive a moment too late. A lot you care, Diggory f said fiercely. But I'm sick of this jaw. What have I got to do? You really must learn to control your temper of yours, boy, said Andrew, Uncle Andrew coolly. Otherwise, you'll grow up like your Aunt Letty. Now, now attend to me. He got up, put on a pair of gloves, and walked over to the tray that contained the rings. They only work, he said, if they're actually touching your skin. Wearing gloves, I can pick them up like this and nothing happens. If you carried one in your pocket, nothing would happen. But of course, you'd have to be careful not to put your hand in your pocket and touch it by accident. The moment you touch a yellow ring, you vanish out of this world. When you are in the other place, I expect, of course, this hasn't been tested yet, but I expect, the moment you touch a green ring, you vanish out of that world, and I expect, reappear in this one. Now, I take these two greens, and I drop them into your right, po right hand pocket. Remember, very carefully, which pocket the green ones are in. G for green, and R for right. G, R, U, C which are the first two letters of green. One of you and one for the little girl. And now you pick up a yellow one for yourself. I shouldn't put it on on your finger if I were you. There will be less chance of dropping it. I should put it on your finger. So he's telling him that you should put it on his finger just to make sure he doesn't lose the teleporting ring. Diggory had almost picked up the yellow ring when he suddenly checked himself. Look here, he said. What about mother? Supposing she asks where I am. The sooner you go, the sooner you get back, said Uncle Andrew cheerfully. But you don't really know whether I can get back. Uncle Andrew shrugged his shoulders, walked across to the door, unlocked it, threw it open, and said. Oh, very well then. Just as you please. Go down and have your dinner. Leave the little girl to be eaten by wild animals or drowned or starved in other, in other world or lost there for good. If that's what you prefer, it's all one to me. Perhaps before tea time, you better drop in on Miss Plummer and explain that she'll never see her daughter again. Because you were afraid to put on the ring. By gum, said Diggory. Don't I just wish I was big enough to punch your head? All right, we're going to... S oh, yeah, I'll finish this one. Then he buttoned up his coat, took a deep breath, and, pick and picked up the ring. And he thought then, as he always thought afterwards too, that he could not decently have done anything else. All right, when we come back, we're going to be on Chapter 3 of The Magician's Nephew. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, and I will talk to you soon. Mr. Mike, signing out. Chapter 3. Peace.